Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade here. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. I have my new map now, so we shouldn't have any lighting issues for videos that I make for Global 40. It's a slightly bigger than the other map. The other map was 32 by 72, and this map is approximately 36 by 78. I think it's just a hair under 78. But uh, I, I, I've been doing, I've been using it since yesterday. I put the units on it a couple of days ago and, and uh, I'm finding uh, uh, the little bit of extra room actually does help. What I did first was I, I, uh, I measured my table, well I've been playing on my table with a map similar to this. It's the same map but, but different dimensions and a different finish on it. If you go to the other video that I just put out on maps then than uh, Global 40 maps, then, then you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, I, I just measured my table and decided how much room I needed along the sides and, and uh, got the biggest map that I could. And a little bit of extra room certainly helps. So the next uh, phase in my video so that, that I'm going to do is uh, strategy videos. I'll try to make one for each nation in, uh, in Global 40. Although I'm, I, I have to admit, you know, I, I'm no expert at it. I, I, I played the game uh, a few times, but um, I haven't played it a lot. Uh, I've played Axis and Allies for many years, just not this version as many times as I would like. But I have played a lot over the last few months. I, I was off work. Uh, I had some surgery, some major surgery last year. So uh, I did have a lot of time to study it, but I haven't been able to play against much competition. But I've been reading online, I've been watching Young Grasshopper's videos on his channel, uh, The Cliffside Bunker. Uh, if you haven't checked out his channel's a uh, uh, wealth of information on, on, on his channel on, uh, on YouTube, that's The Cliffside Bunker. And so I've, I've used his strategies and I've tried to build my own based on some of his, plus the strategies that I was using before I watched his videos. Um, the, 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 I'm going to do Germany first because Germany is the first nation to play the game in, in the turn sequence, or the turn order, excuse me. And so um, the, the strategy that I'm going to use, uh, it, it, you might recognize that it, it's similar to his. It's just uh, there's going to be a variation on that. Uh, let's just move down to the Europe side over here. Um, so um, there, there's been a lot of talk on AxisAndAllies.org lately about uh, Africa Core strategy. And uh, it was started by a person who's going by the name of Africa Core. And this fascinated me because uh, I've been wanting to do something different in the Mediterranean and, and Africa and the Middle East because my... my uh, British strategy has just been kicking the crap out of uh, out of Italy, and there's nothing they can do. And and, uh, and Italy basically has no role in the game. So what I what I really wanted to do was find a role for Italy in this game, other than you know just doing one or two can openers for Germany and 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 being a turtle waiting for the Americans to come over and 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 take them out, or the British to come up from. Africa and take them out. So I wanted to find something else for them. And so uh, I tried to develop my own Africa core strategy. Um, it's not going to be as extensive as the one that uh, the person Africa core has put online there. His, uh, his was very extensive. It, uh, it involved all kinds of things and every purchase and every move for four or five turns was, was, was cataloged. Um, I don't know that you can get away with that. I think you can do it once or twice uh, against um, people that haven't seen the strategy before. But to, to try to plan that far ahead with every single purchase, I don't see it very being very realistic because uh, a, a, a good player, uh, somebody who knows how to play this game, will be able to um, thwart that strategy along the way, especially if they know what it, that, that that's what strategy the person is going to be using. Um, it, 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 I don't think it would work against uh, me the way he developed it, just because my British strategy is something that, uh, that that is not going to be able to defeat. But, you know, I, I commend him. He, he, he did a lot of work on it, and uh, he came up with a good strategy. And he didn't just uh, say, this is it, and this is the way it's going to be. Um, the, the thread has gone on for weeks and weeks now. It's, I don't know, it's like seven or eight pages long. 
and a lot of replies and and so people said you can't do this or you can't do that and this is why and his strategy has been amended he's he's changed it um to his credit and and i think it's a better strategy now than it was um one of the things he wants to do is, is attack the strict neutrals i don't like to attack strict neutrals I, I like to try to avoid them if my opponent wants to take them out then that's fine i'll 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 take all that money and all those dudes for free uh, thank you very much but i'm not a big fan of attacking strict neutrals myself maybe someday i'll get there i don't know but uh for now i uh, i i prefer just to attack the nations that are on the other side right and attack the the neutrals that are aligned to the other side not not attack the strict neutrals so the strategy that i'm going to use um it, uh, it there's a, a fairly uh common uh, German opening strategy and, and I referenced young grasshoppers videos earlier the strategy that you'll see me use here that in the beginning for turn one is very similar to the strategy that he put out the difference will be um, when I do my non-combat moves but it'll be subtle you won't be able to notice it too much his strategy didn't include going to Africa it just included faking sea lion and going Barbarossa or just going sea lion if, if uh, the British player didn't respond to that. So that's uh, that's going to be key in this strategy as well. You need to fake sea lion and and uh, the British player needs to bite on that. Uh, you can't uh, you can't do this strategy. Well, you, you might be able to do it actually, uh, no matter what the British player thinks. But one thing you can't do is you can't do a J1 attack combined with this. Japan can't go on the first turn. Um, or even the second turn because then the Americans can definitely stop the uh, Navy the German Navy from getting to the Mediterranean so uh, uh, Japan is gonna have to wait until turn three uh, with if you're going to play this particular strategy that I'm going to try to do now I've, I've done this strategy a number of times uh, over the last uh, two three weeks um, changing a little bit here tweaking it there um, and I think I've got it to just about where I want it. I, I would imagine as I continue to play that I, I might find a few more tweaks here and there. But uh, yeah, I might get about two, three turns in. I say, no, you know what? I should have done this. And, and then I'll go back and I'll reset it and I'll start again. And, and I just kept doing that. Of course, you don't need to play the whole game. You just need to play um, really just the Germans and the, the Italians and the British uh, to develop this strategy and and for this game or for this uh, video I'm also going to play the Russian player but I'm, I'm not going to show you all of that what I'm going to do is mostly just show you the German player and what the Italian player is doing and then when I'm off camera I'll do the rolling for all of it I'm not just going to assume that uh, that this this uh, these guys are going to win the battle over these guys in this particular territory I'm actually going to do the rolling because that's the way the game is played. You have to be able to uh, accept the fact that you're not going to roll perfectly every time and that uh, the odds are not going to work even though the odds are in your favor or against you. Um, you have to be able to adapt and, and, and do, um, do alternate strategies all along the way. And that, that was one thing that I didn't like about Africa Corps' strategy was that uh, it, everything had to align perfectly for that strategy to work. Um, and, and I'm sure, you know, like a, while he was playing it, he could also, uh, you know, abandon this and, and that and go in a different direction. But, um, w with the strategy that I'm using here, um, any strategy that I use for any nation, it's not set in stone. You, you have a goal, you set a goal, you say, okay, I'm going to try to do this to yourself. And then you, you try to achieve that and how you achieve it uh, you have an idea in mind but you all, you have to take what your opponent gives you and you have to to go based on the roles that you're doing and based on the roles that your opponent is doing and so it, it doesn't matter what nation you're playing you have to play the game that is in front of you not the one that, that you're playing out in your mind and, and what should happen so i will do the roles but i'm i'm going to do them off camera i've already shot this video i did it last night 
but it got to be it was almost two hours long and and i hadn't even come to the end of it it was probably only two thirds of the way through and that's because i was doing all the rolls on camera so i'm going to redo it and i'm going to do the rolls off camera because nobody wants to sit there and watch a video of somebody rolling dice for the longest time uh, i mean i don't like to do that so uh, i'm not going to subject you to that either i'm going to try to get this strategy down uh below two hours um, and, and only show you the strategy but I will also do the British moves and I will do the Italian moves I'll build the the Russian forces but they're not going to attack or anything I'm not going to bother building the American forces and we won't be moving anything on the Pacific side of the map either except for we're going to move a couple of planes off of India and other than that then we're just going to leave that alone because that's not uh, important to this strategy we, we might talk about it a bit what what might be going on over there but that's not a part of this strategy so let's get let's get started here um the german player what they did we, uh the first part of, of this strategy and, and really any strategy if you're the german player if you're going to be successful uh is is faking sea line so i'm going to buy a, an aircraft carrier and two transports um that's going to work out best for our strategy i know some people like to buy the aircraft carrier and uh, uh, maybe a destroyer and a sub but we want those uh we want those transports to carry people down to the uh to the mediterranean and into africa so that's what we're going to buy and that that also looks like a sea lion attack if, if somebody bought that and they were the german player and i was the british player i'd be worrying that they'd be going sea lion and if nothing else that they were faking it and i better just pile my dudes on on uk like i should um, just in case they do that because I tell you if, if, if I'm doing this and I'm the German player and I'm planning on going Africa Corps and they just say oh he's going Africa Corps so they just pile everything in in the Mediterranean or, or in the Middle East or whatever then fine I'll just go sea line I'm already set up for it might as well do it right um, the goal is to win the game not to do your strategy at, at all costs so let's just take our attack moves and once the attack moves are done then i'm going to pause the video and and uh, i'll bring you back after that so uh i like to attack the boats first because that gets the planes off the land uh, and then it makes it a little easier to move around in there so we're gonna we're gonna do our subs in here you'll probably recognize the, this uh strategy um it uh it's fairly straightforward we've got the two subs in here we got one sub going against these boats over here and we've got these two subs coming in here now the battleship uh, we're going to take it in C zone 110 down here because now the battleship has moved away from its own naval base it can only go two spaces if it survives and the goal for us in the end at the end of the second turn we want to be right here where this cruiser is with our navy and so that's two spaces away from where the, the battleship is right now. If we had put it up here, then it wouldn't be able to make it down that far. And we're not sure that it's going to be able to make it anyway. We're going to have to see what happens in this battle and see what happens at the end of the British turn in, uh, in the first round. And that will also dictate whether or not we're going to continue going to the Mediterranean with our Navy or not. So anyway, that's the start of it. And then uh, we're going to take the planes now so we'll uh we'll get uh um because we're we're buying an aircraft carrier we can take this bomber off of germany it's going one two three and then it can land right here in c zone 112 where the aircraft is going or sorry where the aircraft carrier is going so we're going to do that we're going to bring the bombers to this attack down here they can reach just fine and uh we're going to go up here Actually, we'll, we'll take this one down here, and we'll take this one up here, and then we're going to just move these ones out here, and there we go. So we got three tactical bombers and three fighters and two subs going against this Navy, and we've got two bombers, a fighter, a tactical bomber, two subs, and a battleship going against this one. We wanted to go a little heavier on this one because uh, there are three fighters in uh this sea zone or sorry in in london here and there's an air air base on there and uh, there's a, a rule that you can scramble those fighters into into the water um adjacent to you and so um 
uh, we need to go heavier on this one. There's also an air base here. You can see it right down here and there's a fighter, but they can only scramble that one fighter in there because that, that, that's the only fighter that is adjacent to it. So that's why we want to go a little heavier down in, excuse me, in season 110. So there are a couple of other ta attacks that we need to do. And uh, one is France. You can see France is empty right there. That's just because if you take a look down there, they're on the battle board already. So what I'll do is I'll take I'll take these units off that we're going to fight, uh, are going to take uh, into France, and then I'll I will transfer them down there. Um, we also want to take Normandy. That's a part of this strategy as well. Uh, so we're going to take two infantry in there, and we're going to take the other two infantry. I'll just put them out in the water here. You can see that just on the corner. Uh, I'm going to uh, these ones will go down to France. Uh, I'll, I will transfer them all the way down to the battle board uh, once the video is over and I, um, because I can't reach it from over here. So then we're going to take a tank in there and we're going to take two tanks into France along with these three tanks over here in greater southern Germany. And um, we're going to take here, let's just move this one over here just rather than switching them around. We're going to take two uh, artillery into France and one artillery into uh, Normandy. And then we've, we've just got the four mechanized infantry left. We're gonna take those into France as well. So that those two attacks are done. And uh, we just have one more attack left. And that is in Yugoslavia. We're gonna attack these uh, strict neutrals here. Um, and we're gonna take them out. Well, I know uh, one, of the, one thing that you can do is just strafe them, uh, knock them down, and then let the Italians come and get them. But uh, in this, uh, what I want to do here instead, the Italians are going to go after Greece uh, instead of Germany going after them. So uh, we just need to build an attack for them. I've already split these up just to make it go a little faster here. There's six, six infantry on, on southern Germany. So I'm just going to split them up already, make it a little easier. And we'll take uh, the, two, um, the two artillery in. We're going to bring one of these guys over. Now you don't have to worry about Russia attacking you because until you attack them, they're not allowed to attack you. So you can bring in as much stuff as you want. We're going to go with these two planes. Uh, we'll go with the tank. And you know what? What the heck? Let's just go with this tank as well. What's the worst that could happen to us? other than getting diced. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Um, before I turn the camera off though, let me just, uh, let me just, uh, I'll show you the two non-combat movements uh, that uh, I'm going to do. Oh, <laughs> that's the wrong thing on there. Like I said, I was doing this earlier, so I thought I'd change them all. Okay, so uh, there's a strict, or there's a, a, a pro-axis neutral here. So the two non-combat moves that I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the two uh, Germans over from there. And then we put the German soldier on there. Oh, so sorry, we're off camera there. Okay, so that, uh, I, I've just I've moved the, the Germans over there. It looks like a combat move, but it really isn't. It's a non-combat move. But because I'm going to go off camera now, I just wanted to show you what, what all we were going after, uh, what, what territories are gonna be changing hands. And then down here in Bulgaria, we're gonna do the same thing. So this, uh, this infantry is gonna go down to there. And so we take this off and we put a chip on and then we put the, the German soldier on and we put the pie on. So that's basically it, and uh, I'll do this rolling, and uh, not that I haven't done it already a whole bunch of times. Um, it, it, it's actually been pretty close, uh, whether I have good luck or bad luck. So that's the, the way I wanted the strategy to go, is whether or not I had good luck, I wanted to make sure that uh, I could still do this strategy, and that's that's a part of it. So let's hope it works out. If you get good luck, I mean, geez, it just... it. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna to get to the Mediterranean pretty easily. So I will finish this turn off and uh, I will bring you back at the end. Uh, actually, when I'm ready to um, start moving the Italians, that's when I'll bring it back. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we're back now. Um, Germany actually had uh, the best luck I've seen in uh, since I've been running this scenario. 
they, they did extraordinary, extraordinarily well. They, they've still got two subs left and the battleship is undamaged. I mean, this is where they really kicked ass, but also in France too. I've never had this much stuff left over after France. So I don't know if we're gonna get a good gauge of, of how um, this is going to work. Usually I've lost um, all, the, all the infantry and perhaps uh, one or two mech as well mech infantry but uh you know like it, it could go well it could not go well they did lose uh, uh an infantry here in uh, normandy and then over in yugoslavia they lost two infantry there so it, it looks like the uh, uh the yugoslavians put up a better fight than uh, the, the french did so uh that's uh good for them so i'm going to take my uh non-combat moves uh except for the two that i showed you earlier where I took Finland and I took Bulgaria. Now this is uh, where uh, this is very crucial. Uh, I'll show you why. So you see we have three transports here. I put my stuff on already. I want to do as much stuff as I could off camera uh, while still showing you the strategy. So there's three transports here. Now we have to, um, what we want to put on these three transports is four infantry and uh, Two other things. It could be tanks. It could be uh, it could be um, artillery. But uh, that's what we want to put on those those transports to take them down uh, to Africa and to Gibraltar. Uh, because Gibraltar has nothing on it, we all we need to do is is put two infantry uh, on Gibraltar. So we have one infantry here, and we have two in Denmark. That's three, and then we have this other one down here in uh, Normandy that's four and then we have these two things that's uh, that's all we need right there but we're just you know they, they're spread out there so you don't really get the sense that they're getting on those transports and of course we're not going to say anything we don't want the opponent to know what's going to happen so that's what they've uh, that's what they're going to take next time now the time after that uh, the next phase in our plan uh, on, on turn two we're going to want to take southern France so um, We've got one infantry here, but uh, we've also got these infantry over here, and that's what these infantry are for. And the reason we want to bring them to the south here is because once once those transports have dropped everybody off, then the next turn they're going to come up and pick up in stuff, and then come up and pick up more stuff. So those are the only extra units that we're going to use, and those are basically the units that were just going to be in Western uh, Western uh, Europe anyway. Uh, we're not really taking anything away from our Barbarossa attack. Uh, the, still, the, the, the Germans, after this turn, they collected 70 IPCs, and they're going to go with just about 70 IPCs against Russia. They can't fit that many on Germany, so they're not going to go with that many, but uh, that's, that's pretty close to what they're going to do. Uh, these ones down here are the only ones that will be taken away from the, from the Eastern Front. Um, and they're uh, they're going to go uh, down to Africa as well, probably. But we, you know, we'll, like we see how that goes. We'll see um, how how the rolling goes. We'll see what what Britain puts up against it. So, uh, and we have one more thing here that we can uh, we can move these guys. We can move these guys. We can move these guys. Um, I say probably take uh, take this many down here, and. And move these guys over and that's basically it that's the end of our turn and and so uh, we've already put our stuff on that was the aircraft carrier and the two transports and it's looking good up here and so let's take you down to the other side because I've also done the British turn before we go though I want to show you something you see that that battleship and the sub are still there and uh, the the British they purchased six infantry and a fighter because they wanted to make sure that uh, they were uh, ready for that Barbarossa attack. In, in the attack over here, um, both the sub and the, um, the destroyer killed each other on the first round. So that left the transport. And what the, the transport brought over the, uh, the tank and the infantry. So they're also on, on uh, UK right now. And so UK stocked up pretty good. And they could have gone after the battleship. But the thing is, if they had done that, then, um, uh, then they couldn't have done the Taranto raid. And uh, I just don't think that you can leave that many Italian boats in the Mediterranean. 
Uh, if you'd done that and you'd saved a boat, then um, then you would have blocked those those ships there from going down there. So that would have been a good move if you knew what was coming. But the problem is that sub there. That sub you had an extra thing that you could lose. Plus you could have taken a hit with your battleship, and you would have been taking planes off. And at this point, when when Britain, Great Britain is is, uh, ta is taking their turn, they still don't know that there's not going to be a sea line attack. So they want to hang on to as many ships as possible. And so they decided not to go that route. They could have gone after the German boats or they could have gone after the Italian boats. And they did decide to go after the Italian boats here in Toronto that we're sitting right here. Um, there was the two, um, the two Italian fighters and a German fighter here. They scrambled into that sea zone as well because they want to take out as many uh, knowing that uh, Germany's coming down, they want to take out as many British units as they can before Germany gets there. Uh, that'll just make things so much easier, so much simpler. Uh, Germany won't have to lose their navy. They can actually use their navy down there. We're bringing the German navy down to clear out the RAF and to clear out the, the UK boats. But if we can get as many down there as possible, we know that the Italians have the ability to rebuild after that because the Germans can keep... Uh, the British at bay down in in uh, in Africa and in the Middle East and and help clear out the Med and keep the Med clear of uh, of British boats. So um, so they knew that they could afford to do that, that they could afford to scramble the fighters in there. And so what the result of that was, uh, with everything that went in there, like all the boats that were sitting here in C Zone 98, except for the transport. So there would have been a destroyer, an aircraft carrier, um, a cruiser. Um, there was a, a tactical bomber and then the British brought down a bomber and a fighter from London into that attack and everybody died in that entire fight except for this bomber right here. That bomber is the only thing to survive the Toronto raid. And so if I'm both sides uh, not knowing what's going to happen next, I'm pretty happy with that. As the Italian, uh, uh, Italian player, I'm happy that... Um, that I took that many things off and as the British player I'm happy that I got the boats out of there and that I got all of those fighters off of Italy. I'm, I think I'm, I'm ahead of the game at this point. So now uh, and then of course they, they uh, did their non-combat move and they went here and also the British uh, they attacked uh, the, the boats that were sitting here. There's a destroyer and a uh, transport there. They attacked that with the cruiser that was out here by Gibraltar and with the fighter that was also at Gibraltar. Oh, that's right, and also the fighter that was on here died in, in uh, the Toronto raid as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I'm just looking around at the other boats and I'm making sure that that's right, and that is right. Everybody died there except for that bomber. So, uh, yeah, th so those boats were all killed, but that he also killed the cruiser. Um, so, the, the British cruiser from Sea Zone 91. So the only boats that are left in the Mediterranean are the four Italian boats here and the two French boats. And what's happened over here, um, the, the British took their, their transport down from Sea Zone 98 and they took from Alexandria, they took the, the tank and they took uh, an infantry off of Egypt and they moved them here to attack the Axis, uh, pro-Axis neutrals. They also moved up the, um, the mechanized infantry from, uh, from Egypt as well. That just, uh, that just skated its way up there <laughs> on the land. And then the two planes that you see here, they came from India. So they couldn't fly over neutral territories, but th that was okay, they could make it. So they went one, two, three, Wait a minute. Oh, they, they can go five. That's right. So four, and then they had to land either in Transjordan or Syria. And so they, they, they landed in Transjordan. And you know what? Just we, we should probably, uh, while we're finishing their turn off, move uh, uh, one of the armor in there as well. Um, because uh, just in case the, the Italians decide to come down there uh, to try to take out those planes. So uh, for the British player, you're better off having a ground unit in there as well. And um, the, yeah, the, uh, the, the um, non-combat moved these guys up here. The non-combat moved over to Eastern Persia. Uh, they brought these two over from 
uh, oh, I'm missing some things here. They brought those two over from India on a transport. And there was uh, two, two uh, pro allies neutrals there. So that was a non-combat move. And uh, then they, they uh, moved the fighter over here. They've moved these boats over. And because uh, we're not doing a J-1 attack, then this battleship was able to survive. So Britain feels like they're pretty lucky right at this point. They, they don't know that the boats are coming down to the, to the Mediterranean. Um, they think that uh, they might have to withdraw or withstand a sea lion attack and it's probably going to be a Barbarossa attack. So they think they're doing all right. They wish they didn't lose as many boats as they did. Now it's the Italians turn. Uh, by the way, uh, I think I mentioned uh, Germany collected uh, 70 IPCs. That's normally what I collect every every turn for Germany on the first turn. And Great Britain collected uh, 37 IPCs because they were up four. Plus they had their only national objective on the Europe side. Um, and I'm not going to bother um, building anything on India because uh, for the first few uh, turns here, they're not going to be moving anything over anyway. They're worried about the Japanese players. So um, really they're, they're hoping that the Europe side can bring some over. So uh, um, now it's the Italian player and they get 10 IPCs for an income. So they're gonna buy a fighter and that's all they're going to do. Now there's not many attacks for them. These guys are gonna go up here and this guy's gonna come down here and um, we're gonna go with everything into Alexandria and these things into Tunisia. And then up here in the Mediterranean, these guys are gonna come down here. And then these, the, the transport, rather than going to Africa. Now, if, if I wasn't planning on bringing those boats down, I would definitely be bringing guys to Africa knowing that this is the last chance I get to. But uh, knowing that they're coming down, I'm going to come over there uh, and, and bring um, a tank and an infantry unit from northern, or actually, let, let's bring a, an infantry unit from southern Italy. Uh, that would be a better idea because the northern Italy ones can then uh, start moving over towards uh, Russia. So we're going to bring that and we're going to bring this tank as well on the transport and we're going to use the cruiser for uh, a landing shot and the reason we're putting them in there because we just bought that fighter it'd be nice if we save some but i mean we're happy that uh, that we got all that crap out of there so we're going to put the fighter on there so when uh, the the few british boats that are left uh, if or planes that are left if they do try to attack that then maybe we can take one or two of those off as well with the cruiser and the fighter so that's why we're going there and then over here against the french boats we're going to take uh, the, the other two uh, remaining boats, uh, a destroyer and um, a submarine, and we're going to use our bomber as well. So we're hoping to clear those boats out of the Mediterranean, and that will get us a national objective. And uh, that will be the only national objective that we get in, in, this, uh, in this round, the first round. But we're hoping to get three national objectives in the second round because when you look at it, if they, if they can take this out and they can take Alexandria out and hold it and then, and then Germany comes down here and takes this out and then the Italian takes this out in the next turn, that's a national objective, getting all of Northern Africa. And then um, the uh, Germans are, are going to take out Gibraltar and they're going to take out Southern France and with the Italians taking out Greece, that is another national objective. So they should be collecting uh, probably about 30 IPCs on the second turn. They're going to collect 20 IPCs if their attacks are successful here. And since uh, since there's only a couple of attacks, I'll just roll these up while, while you know, I got you on camera here. Because I'm actually all ready to go for the next turn for the, the Germans. They're all purchased and, and they're ready to go. So down here we have uh, one at one and two at two. And they got the hit, and the British player has got a miss. So there we go. We got that one. Okay. And we have this one as well. Uh, Kenya. Can you see that? There you go. Okay, so then uh, we've got this attack up here in Tunisia. And those are misses. And they have a miss. So, T2 
two more. That's a hit. Oops, sorry. And, and a miss. So these guys are off and this is on. Now we have grease. So we have a landing shot from the cruiser and that's a hit. And then we have three infantry. That's uh, two, no, sorry, those are two, so that's not hits. Okay, so those are misses. And then we have two tanks and we had one hit. So there's two off and they have four. Four at two. And ooh, all misses. Okay, so uh, so then we have three infantry again, and that's one hit, and two tanks, and that's a hit as well. So these are gone, and we'll just roll them. And both misses, man. They got sixes there. These uh, these are neutrals weren't weren't that good. Okay, so we've taken that now, so that's good. Okay, so what do we have left? I think we just have the boats left, don't we? So we're going to go after those French boats there. So we have, uh, actually we might as well just roll both of those together. They're both twos and there's a destroyer for the French. So there is no, um, there is no sneak shot against them. And we got one hit and then we got a bomber and that's a miss. So we got one at two and one at three for the French miss and a miss okay so we got two at two and one at four that's a hit and so they got one at three and that's a hit so we got one hit and we have to decide which one of these to take now i think that it would be a better idea to take out uh Normally I would just take this one off because the, the planes wouldn't be able to hit this, but I think the planes are going to go over here and this would also give me one shot at a plane. So you know what, let's, let's, uh, let's go with the destroyer instead. Okay. So then we do the non-combat moves and you know what, I'll finish these non-combat moves later. Okay. There's all I'm going to do is I'm going to move some guys towards, uh, oh, sorry. We got the, we got the Alexandria attack too. All I was going to do is move some guys towards, uh, uh Russia with the non-combat moves because they've pretty much moved everything that can move anyway. So, uh, we have, uh, two at one, no, three at one, two at two. So three at one misses, two at two misses, and then one at three. And that's a miss. <laughs> Here, I thought this one would be a formality and the British got one hit. So that's not too good. So two at one, that's one hit. Two at two, that's two hits. Okay, so then the British get to fight back. They still got two and they got one more hit. So that's off. And so they've taken Alexandria as well. Uh, There we go. So I will do the, the rest of the free moves or the non-combat moves later. I still call it free moves. I think that was the term in the, in the original game and it's just stuck with me. So that's the way it's going to look down here in the end. The only difference is going to be the Italian player moving some stuff. So let's head back to the other side of the board there. And uh, the Italians are up five there and they have that a national objective of five plus they have 10 IPC, so they're going to collect, uh, they're going to collect 20 IPCs. Um, let me just put their fighter on. That'll make me feel way better. Here we go. We just have to do their non-combat moves, but we'll do that after the German turn here. Just so for the sake of time. Okay, so this is what I've bought. And I've managed, I, I saved six IPCs. The reason I've done that, I'm not normally in the habit of saving money, but I want all of the stuff to go against Barbarossa, but I also want to buy a destroyer for that Navy, but I don't want to buy it until they get to the Mediterranean. They're going to have that Southern Europe uh, industrial complex. So I saved six of the eight IPCs that I'm going to need, but I couldn't put everything I wanted on Germany anyway. I would have, excuse me, I would have liked to have bought 20 infantry, but you can't put 20 infantry on Germany. You can only put 10 on, and if I had to put... Uh, 10 of them on Western Germany, then that's too late. I want them there sooner. I want them to reach the border sooner than that. 
So I just bought the 10 infantry and then I bought uh, three tanks. I bought a fighter and then I bought a couple of other infantry that can go over here. Start to build up because uh, the Americans are eventually going to be coming across the water. So we might as well build a, uh, that up a little bit slowly um, because we, we, uh, we have that extra money right now and we can't put it in, in Germany as I was saying. So the next phase of, of our um, Africa Corps, uh, the German player is wondering, okay, what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? I made this purchase. And okay, they figured, okay, no transfer. So they must be going Barbarossa. And we are, we're going Barbarossa, but we're also going, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll put the camera over here. And uh, I, you, you can see where the boats are. So you, you see where they're coming from. Okay, so everything's going down. And uh, they actually only have one attack move, um, I believe. Oh no, they have two attack moves. Let's take the attack moves first. Let's do this. Let's do this proper. So we're going to come down here with this infantry. We're going to come over with these three infantry from northern uh, Italy. That's why we put them there. Um, we're going to come down with uh, three tanks. And uh, these mechs were here, right? Okay. Um, yeah, I think we'll just we got more than enough to, to get them there. So I think that we're just going to stick with that for now. Because I'd like to move the tanks that we don't need and the mechanized infantry start making my way towards Russia with those. Um, you know what, let's take these two. We might as well because I think we can use those in down in Africa as well. So that's what we got. And the other attack now, it's obvious what we're doing here. We're, we're going to the Mediterranean, and there's a reason for that. Uh, we're saving, uh, uh, we're giving the Italians a role in this game. Um, and to do that, we need to be able to protect their navy until they can build it large enough that it can protect itself. Plus, in Africa, even if, uh, even if the Italian navy survived, I think that the, the British still have a better chance of taking Africa than the Italians do. Um, they, they get more income, right? So you need something else that you need to bring a few units into Africa to help balance the scales and hopefully tip that balance, uh, go a little bit further than that um, with, the, with the German player. And so that's really what we're doing is we're going after the, the British. That's what this whole strategy is about, is by going after the British. So if you're going to kick somebody in the nuts, I mean, you might as well put your steel-toed work boots on, right? So let's just go ahead and kick them right in the nuts. Okay, let's, uh, let's come over here. Big strategic bombing run. So we're coming. We'll just put all the stuff out here. So two strategic bombers. We've got three fighters. We've got three tactical bombers. What else do we have here? Uh, can this thing reach that? One, two, three, four. No, it can't. So I guess we're just doing it with these ones here. It seems to me I'm missing two. Oh no, that's where they, they, they went on to the aircraft carrier. I'm not missing them. So, uh, um, three, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight planes going in here. Now, they have to make a choice here, don't they? Um, actually, this one was supposed to be up here. Sorry about that. that. So they've got four planes against eight planes. Now, they got to ask themselves, do they want to scramble? Or do they, sorry, not scramble. Do they want to, to try to intercept those? And, uh, um, and I'm thinking that they probably do. Uh, you know what? I, I, uh, I did something wrong there. What I meant to do with this one was be on Western Germany. So I'm going to do that, okay? Uh, I'm going to say instead of landing that thing on Germany, he landed on, on Western Germany. Because this thing's coming in here too, okay? So that's four strategic bombers. Now, if we were playing a game, it, I, I wouldn't get away with that, and I wouldn't even try it. It's just that I'm trying to show you the strategy, and I'm trying to move quickly, and that's why I, I make uh, the odd mistake. So I'll try to correct those and say this is what I meant to do. Uh, uh, that's the uh, second time I've done that. So, yeah, now they're going in with nine planes against four, and um, 
as a UK player, you, you've got to ask yourself, should I go up there? I mean, if you had unlimited resources, then, um, then it might be a good idea to go up there and to intercept or to try to intercept. But I got to think that with nine of them, then you're going to lose uh, probably at least one, maybe two. You might even lose three of your fighters. And is that a good idea? Um, you can use those fighters. Uh, at this point, you still don't know um, what's going on. The, the Germans have not done, well, I guess they are going to do their combat move. Um, so they're going to bring down, this is a combat move. I was thinking it was non-combat. I really don't like the German carriers. They tip over so easily. Even even when you're using, uh, not using the, the flight stands, they just tip over way too easy. And uh, I've got two other German carriers, the uh, historical board gaming ones, but uh, they are not any better, uh, or they're too small. Um, so I don't like those either. Uh, actually, this sub was here. That sub's going to go against that boat there. And that's in a combat movement as well. And we've got these. Might as well take the sub down there. I usually, when I'm moving a whole navy down, even though some of them aren't taking part in the attack, I just move the whole thing anyway. It saves me from doing it twice. So the, the British do know what, what's going on by now. But the thing is, it can change, right? Like you could be faking them out. You could say, okay, we're going to go after the Mediterranean and move all your boats down there. But then they're still in range, aren't they? Once they take over Gibraltar, which they're doing right now, I guess I need to do that too. We need to bring those things down there. So uh, this guy is coming uh, onto Morocco there. And uh, we've got the two going to Gibraltar. Uh, this guy's going to Morocco. And then these two things. So there we go, six things on three transports. And that's what it looks like down there. So they have... Mar or they have Gibraltar and they're going to have Morocco pretty quick here. Okay, so now this is this is the information now that uh, that the British have have to go on, and so you look at that and you think, geez, you know, um, should I save my planes? Should I go after that? Maybe this is the last opportunity that I have. What would you do? Ask yourself that question. Four planes against nine planes. Everybody gets to shoot at one. Um, but if you don't go up there, then we've got two and four tactical bombers of six. Then you get six shots at one to try to kill their planes without putting yours at risk. So that's a pretty good option as well. You know what? Let's not scramble them. Um, and I'm doing it this time, but you know what? Ne next time I might just decide to scramble them. You know, like you just never know, right? So they've got four shots at, uh, at the tactical bombers. And they got all misses there. Here, I'll show you. They got all misses here. And then uh, we've got two shots at the strategic bombers. And those are misses. So, uh, shame they didn't go uh, for it. But anyway, so we're going to go the strategic bombing raid uh, against the, the industrial complex. And they have 10. Holy crap. Plus you add two to each bomber. That's 14. So that's uh, 14 damage. Uh, 13, 14 against their industrial, con or yeah, against their industrial, I'm using this one from the capital city markers. It's black because it's major. Um, that's the British Parliament building, so that's 14 damage. Now, we're going to take two tactical bombers against the uh, air base, and that is uh, five. And then two against the naval base and that's nine so you can't have more than six so that's maximum damage so we got six against the naval base and five against the air base i just put these bases on because i have the bases painted on and you can't really put chips under a painted on base so yeah that's what i'm going to do just like that um and so that's the strategic bombing raid and now the british player is bent right over grabbing his nuts thinking about how much fun that wasn't. Okay, down here, down here we've got that attack and so we got the, the British, or sorry, the, the German battleship and that's a hit. And so we've got the, the dude shooting back and he got a hit. 
So, he got one shot off anyway. There we go. And this belongs to the Germans now. And this is why we're not going on J2. Because you got to think that the Americans would have bought something on J on, on their first turn, right? So if they had warships here, and now they were at war, they can reach these boats here. Plus, if they, they've got bombers and planes, they can reach over here as well. And we don't want that as, uh, as the Axis side. We want those boats to make it into the Mediterranean. Now, Germany is going to go before America on turn three. So Germany can get into the Mediterranean, and then Japan can go uh, do their big attack, J3. And then the Americans get to go, and it's too late for them to catch the Germans on the way in. I know a lot of players like to go J1. And uh, you, just, you have to talk about it before the game, of course, if you're going to do this, right? So you're not going to be able to do your J1 attack. You're going to have to wait till J3. So that's basically it. Now, I've still got some non-combat moves to make. And, uh, oh, no, we, we still ha have that southern France attack. And so what do we got there? We got four infantry so and two artillery. So four or two at one and four at two. I uh, got one hit there, and then three at three, and that's three hits, but they've only got two, so they got one hit. So, that comes off, and that comes off, and that comes off. There we go. We have our complex, our industrial complex, in the Mediterranean, so we can build boats down here now. Uh, we don't really need to build land units, because we can build them up here and move them down, but I mean... We wouldn't be able to do that with boats. We would have to sail through the Atlantic and then they would be exposed. But now we can just buy boats and place them right on there and and uh, and we can make the Navy larger. Although I, I don't need to buy a, a, a big Navy buy down there. What I want to do is just uh, is maybe buy one boat here and one boat there. Try to get you know two or three boats before the Americans come across the water there and challenge us. Uh, we might be able to, if we combine that with the Luftwaffe, if we do it just right, then we might be able to take out the Americans when they come across. Even though we're going to lose the, the German Navy, at least they've already dropped a, a bunch of stuff down in, in Africa. And uh, Italy has got a, uh, enough uh, boats by then, and they're on their way down to Africa with a lot of, of units. So uh, we've accomplished that goal, and if we take out the, the Americans, it could be three or four turns again before they're ready to come across and challenge in, into into on the um, on the Atlantic side of the map. So at the Europe side. So um, anyway, uh, I'm going to uh, put my stuff on afterwards. I'm going to pause the the video now and and clean all of this up and and show you again. Uh, I don't think I have to show you the Italian turn because there's just a a bit of, of non-combat moves plus I have to finish up the non-combat moves with these guys uh, because <laughs> we're, we're pressed for time when we do this okay so I'll be back okay so we've come to the end of round number two I've done all the attacks and uh, all the non-combat movements and everything for the British and the uh, Italian player uh, I've done all the moves and the buys and everything for the Russian player so uh, now, Matt, you remember all the damage that, that uh, the British player took up in, up in London up there? It's all still there. I mean, why bother paying it down when all that's going to happen is that it's, it's going to reappear? Uh, the only thing you're really buying is a chance to take more shots at their planes. And there's something to be said for that. But also, I mean, with, uh, with that... Uh, that German Navy coming down to the Mediterranean. I mean, you really, you really got to start putting some units down here or you're going to be overwhelmed. Um, so what the British did, well, let's say the Italians took this out. So they've got that na na national objective that I talked about. They got three national objectives and they're sitting with 50 IPCs because they saved 20 from last time. And then, uh, um, sorry, the, um, uh, yeah, they, they got 20 after the end of the first turn, and after the end of the second turn, they got 30, and they spent their 10 on the first turn. So they, they're sitting with 50 IPCs at this end of the second turn. But uh, there was two planes that were sitting here 
they went up here and they took out uh, the two boats that were sitting here. They brought a destroyer from from down here, and I think that's the Red Sea, isn't it? So they brought a destroyer up. So because of that destroyer, they did not scramble the fighter. The Italians did not scramble that fighter, um, and it's a good thing they didn't because uh, they would have lost it, um, and uh, and they kind of need it uh, for for uh, moving forward here. Um, the, those boats did uh, did their job. They did take out one British boat, which was good for them. Um, these British boats, uh, that these are the ones that came down from Sea Zone 109 up beside London there. They're making their way uh, next turn. They'll be down here and they'll be ready to start chucking troops. You can see here there's where that destroyer that was lost and, and here's the two boats that were lost for the Italians. Um, up here, um, these planes that were over here, uh, in Transjordan that came from India, they're making their way back to India because uh, the Japanese player is, is about to strike on J3 now. And I mean, the British player doesn't know that, but they just know that they're going to have to start building up India. And it doesn't look very built up right now, but that's just because I wasn't purchasing anything for them. Um, uh, like I said earlier, we weren't playing on that side of the board, except to take a few units off that we needed on the first turn. So what they did buy, they bought an industrial complex and a naval base, and um, they also bought uh, um, a tank. That uh, that sub this up there, it took off, it managed to take off four IPCs in damage. So uh, um, the, they uh, they were down four IPCs from the 37. So that's what they did. And I, I you want, might wonder why I'm putting that naval base on. If you haven't seen one of my videos before where I showed uh, that's why, what I do there. Uh, with uh, In this area down here, the British, the, all they need is three transports and they can do a shuck from uh, South Africa here. So one turn you have two transports and you move them up. You can either move them to uh, Persia if you're taking your troops eventually to India or to, um, to Russia. Or you can move them straight to Egypt, which is what they will be doing probably until the uh, un until Africa is taken or it's no longer safe to put boats up there. So, uh, and then there's a, um, also a naval base on Egypt so they can get back down here. Because if, if you didn't have that naval base here, uh, when you brought uh, transports up, you wouldn't be able to get those transports back to South Africa. It would take you two turns to do that. And then that's just not very cost effective. So you need that, that naval base in order to, uh, to take advantage of those three uh, units that you can put on in, on the industrial complex in South Africa. And uh, the British, they were able to take back Anglo Egypt, Sudan, although they did lose um, two infantry. Um, those are they, they, these guys came from the Middle East. They came on the two transports here and they had a landing shot from the cruiser. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, the, uh, the Italians uh, non combat moved one of those uh, one tank back. And I showed you where they took uh, took out northern North Africa there. So let's head back up to uh, let's head back up to Germany there and take a look at what we got up here. Okay, so after the non-combat moves that we did and everything, and we put our units on, you can see at the end of the German turn that they're all all ready to go into into Russia. Plus we have the Italians. Uh, they've moved over uh, at the end of the second, uh, their second turn. They came up from Greece and they came over from northern Italy, and they're already they, uh, they they've got one more space to go. So y you can make a, your decision now. Um, with uh, uh, here, I'll just show you what I bought here. Um, they have 55 IPCs, and, and this is what they bought. They wanted to, to buy a destroyer to put down in the Mediterranean because every navy should have a destroyer. Um, just in case uh, the subs come along. Plus, uh, you know, that's also good cannon fodder if uh, the RAF was to take a shot at that Navy. So they need to start building boats and I don't want to build them all at once. So building one boat at a time is a good idea, especially since you can't put everything on, uh, everything on Germany at once uh, and move it to Russia. So you could go now 
It's it's uh, G3 right now. You could go in into uh, Russia right now. You could bring these infantry in, these infantry in, these infantry in, and I've got three planes here that can reach. These these planes over here, they had to land either here or in Holland, Belgium, after the uh, the strategic bombing run. So they're out of position in going for Russia, but you don't really need that many because there's only one infantry on on there. Uh, now, I would not go uh, with the tanks or the mechanized infantry or the artillery in there because as you see here, Russia is set up for um, a counter strike if you were to move uh, all your units in. So you either have to move everything in and hope that you hold it all or just move your infantry in and and see what uh, what Russia decides to do there. Because if, if uh, they don't do anything, if they just sit where they are right now, then you can go after their tanks and, and go after their artillery. But uh, I, um, it's it's uh, I would not move everything in there. But the other side of the coin is is you don't have to go on G three. You can also go on G four. Um, there's something to be said for going on G3, like you want to you wanna go as quickly as possible. You know that the Americans are going to be able to declare war on this turn. Uh, this is the start of the turn, so uh, in maybe two turns from now, the Americans could be hitting Europe, although it's probably more likely that if they had enough force to come over without getting taken out by the German boats, it would probably take three turns. So you'd kind of like to be able to be just about at Moscow by then, and if you wait one more turn, then you might just get bogged down. For one thing, uh, the the Russians are 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 getting uh, 37 IPCs, which is a lot. And you can only take two IPCs off them to begin with here, so you're not really taking the income down, but you are making your way into Russia. So that's what uh, that's what I I'd, I'd be doing is is. Uh, probably moving those infantry in and moving the planes in. In the interest of time, I, I, I'm going to end the video soon. So I'm not going to bother showing you that. I, what I wanted to do was show you uh, what you could do, uh, what I would do for my, um, my Africa Corps strategy, and that is getting boats to the Mediterranean and getting troops to, to Africa, German troops to Africa, and, and getting into Italy into the game. But I, I don't need to keep playing the game. I mean, from here on in, it, it's a matter of, of deciding for yourself or me deciding for myself based on what's going on with America, what's going on with uh, Japan, um, what's going on everywhere on the board, whether I'm going to take, do this attack now or not. And it's hard to make that decision, not knowing how, how well Japan is doing, not knowing where the, the Americans have built but just so you know, you're all ready to go here. Or you're ready to go next turn because you've got 10 more uh, troops to move up. You, you bought a whole bunch of more troops. And uh, the Italians, if you wait one more turn, they will be in, in place to attack Bessarabia as well. So uh, you, can, you can make a decision based on all of the facts. Right now, we've only got most of the facts. But let's just finish off our... our Trip, our little trip to the Mediterranean here, and I'm not going to do the whole turn. I'm just going to show you how it finishes off. Okay, so uh, this would be a non-combat movement. I don't think, unless you're going into Russia, I don't think that they do have a combat movement. So basically, this you're at a you're at a naval base here. You can go three, one, two, three, down to C zone 94, and then everybody goes in there, and you're wobbly aircraft carrier. And you're, and then we can take three infantry down, and I'd take three tanks because they can get across North Africa faster. There you go. That's Africa Corps because now you can uh, you, you put uh, you put six uh, things anywhere down along the coast here, and you go up one, down one, up one, down one. You can just keep doing that uh, until you think you've got enough units down there. Um, these uh, right here, I would move this guy across, and I would move these guys out here, out of here too, just so they they couldn't get nailed with a landing shot by the Americans if they come across uh, into Egypt. But I, I think I'd keep these ones here and keep the Italians here as well, because the the if the, that probably would be a strategy that the Americans would like to do if you employed this strategy for the Axis, they would probably want to come down to Africa and give. Um, 
give the great uh, give the UK a chant or a, a hand down there, and then they would start making their way into the into Europe, if uh, depending on what happened between the battle of those navies, right? So that is Africa Corps for me, and that's my German strategy video. Um, I could keep going, like I said, but but I mean you get the general gist of it. That's uh, basically what's going on, and uh, Italy now uh, at uh, on this turn on on Italian third turn, I would build their navy. For one thing, you have a destroyer here. You're out of reach of their planes. Uh, let me see one, two. They could reach with their boats, but that would be the end of their boats. And you have a fighter in here. Uh, you have a navy, which would include a battleship. Uh, you could uh, here. This is what I was thinking of buying, but then I thought, you know, the the video is getting long. You could buy a battleship, two transports, and a aircraft carrier, or you could uh, instead of buying an aircraft carrier, you could buy a couple of other things, um, and and you're all set. You're all set to start taking on Africa, and you build a a boat and uh, and some land units every turn, and next thing you know, you've got a rather large navy. And uh, you've got a good presence down there. So you take Egypt first, and then you can from there you split down there. You go and you go into the Middle East. So that's that's Africa Corps for me, uh, using the Germans. And then who knows what will happen over here. But that's the end of my video. So thanks for joining me. If if you uh, like this video, um, if you have any comments on my new map or anything. And don't don't hesitate to leave a comment in the, in the comment section below the video here. Um, I understand that you probably oh I wouldn't do that I'd do this instead. You know you have your own way of doing things and everything. And and you know what I wouldn't do this every single time either. Everything every time I did it it would be slightly different. I don't normally go to Africa. Um, uh, so you know it's just uh, you, you got to be adaptive and you got to do different things every time. But. This is what I'm doing and, and uh, just uh, hopefully you get some ideas for yourself what to do from this video. Anyway, take care everyone. General Hein Grenade out.